Appreciate it. special you did out there tonight. Did you even just when predicting this fight or envisioning it think you could end it like that? Uh, you know, there was a lot of things going through my head for this fight. Um, he, was, he, I took him very, very serious. You know, like I said, he's one of the best wrestlers in the division. And uh, people really thought he could beat Khabib in the future. So I, I took it like it was a championship fight. Uh, I hurt my ankle two, about two weeks ago, um, getting ready for this one. And uh, I just, I was telling my coach, I'm like, if I'm going to throw a kick, it's going to be the left kick. It's going to be the hurt ankle because uh, I was having trouble pivoting off of it. So when he started dipping his head a little bit, I was like, all right, it's time. It's, let me break out this bad boy. Yeah, of course. Uh, coming back down to the lightweight division. Um, you know, a lot of people forgot. You know, they, they wrote me out of the top five. And uh, I had to make sure I reminded them who, who's here and who's the real future of this division. I mean, y'all follow the sport more closely than anybody. Uh, there's nobody else at lightweight that you can really look at and say, this guy is going to rule uh, for a long time. And uh, I feel like I got to remind people that I'm that guy. Is the victory sweeter because of the fact you talked about it being a dangerous fight? And, you know, a lot of people are like, why would he take this? And, and you got the win and he did it impressively. Does that, does that make it sweeter? Yeah. A little bit, a little bit, but not too much. Yeah. Like I said, I'm, I'm not, I'm not totally ready to celebrate yet. Yeah. Like, I, I, I want to go belt. That, that's when you're gonna see me standing up here, like all smiles, like cheers, cheers, and everything. Um, I gotta go belt to win. You know, he, he is very dangerous. He was very, uh, uh, he was somebody he had to take serious, but I ain't ready yet. We heard that for us, Ahabi was sort of running a little bit late. They closed off one of the tunnels. What exactly happened there? Uh, did you think at one point that maybe he wasn't going to be in your corner? Yeah, I mean, uh, they was bringing the president in, so they made sure to, like, we was all on lockdown. We It took us a, maybe an hour and a half to go a mile from to get here, uh, and he got caught in that whirlwind. But that didn't break. I honestly didn't even think about it. It didn't break my focus at all. Um, I just remembered everything that he said to me, and... and, and uh, even throughout the warm up, he wasn't there for the warm up. Uh, but I made sure to to keep all the stuff that we worked for these past six weeks in training camp. I made sure to, to that I was going to do him prop. How much of a difference was it having him in the corner like as the fight was actually playing out? I, it, it was a big difference. Um, there's been a void in, in, in my training uh, since the passing of Robert Fallis. Um I felt like I didn't have that that guy who could who could speak to me. Um, and the last fight that I really felt like he was there was for the Barboza fight. And uh, if you go back and watch that, I was, I was kind of talking to myself throughout the fight. And I was really speaking for him. And uh, in this fight, I didn't have to do that. I, there, was no, there was no chatter going on. I just let him speak. And I just, I just stayed focused and I stayed in the moment. And uh, I felt like that made a really big difference. Um, he hit me with a couple punches in the old me. I would have started brawling. I would have went, went back to what I was going to do. But uh, he told me stay focused, stay on the game plan, and keep 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 the long vision in sight. The other noticeable thing was when you did win, you were super, super humble about it. Was that something that you, you had a point to do? It always seemed like he was on purpose. To be honest with you, I don't, I don't really understand what people be saying humble and all that. Like, I don't really get that shit. Like, I just do me, and I'm just doing what I'm doing. If, if it's humble, okay, fine. That's... It's whatever. If it's braggadocious, that's just how I'm feeling today. Like, I just, you know, I, I don't know. I'm a human, so I, like, I feel like I change from day to day. And uh, that's just how I was feeling. The kick landed, but I wasn't like, I was still ready to go. And I'm still ready to go again. And I'm still not like, you know what I mean? Some days you're going to see me, I'm going to be on 10. Some days you're going to see me, I, I'm going to be more cool and calm and collected. And, uh, you know, I, I'm growing. So that's all. With the uh, injury. A lot of people wondering from yesterday when you came into the lands in the fight tonight if you had staff infection on your chest. Is that what that was? I, I thought so too for a little bit. But uh, <laughs> I ain't even gonna lie to you. It popped up two days ago. I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Um, but they took a look at it and it was just an ingrown hair. Uh, it gave me a little scare, you know. Lord was testing me a little bit. I said, man, come on, don't do this to me. But uh, it's nothing. So, you know, we, I glossed over it. You mentioned the injury. Uh, when do you anticipate getting back to training? I know this is a fresh win, but uh, do you see it as like a serious injury or anything? 
Yeah, it was it was very serious when it happened. You know, it was hard for me to walk for about a week uh, before the fight. Um, but I just made sure I stayed on it every single day. And uh, I hear there's a New York City Marathon tomorrow. So uh, I ain't never done nothing like that. So I might, I might try running that bad boy. Even on it, you know, my, my foot probably going to be swollen. And I'm probably going to be in the club tonight. But uh, I might wake up and, and run in that marathon first. Uh, it's not Magachev on Twitter that he wants you in January. Is that the fight that you want? Is it in Russia? Uh, no, Russia is November. But January is uh, Las Vegas? Uh, January 18th. Mm -hmm. Maybe the Conor Cobb. Mm, maybe, maybe. We'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll see. You know, I do want that fight. Um, I want it in Russia. That, that's a bigger fight for me. Um, so if he want to fight in Moscow, we, we can fight. I don't know no dates of when that is. You know, I didn't look past this one. Uh, and I ain't think too much far into the future, but uh, yeah, sure, that's a fight. That's a fight I'm definitely interested in, and uh, that's another fight that's gonna remind people again and uh, remind myself again. I don't really give a fuck what nobody else think, but remind myself again that I'm here and I'm here to stay. Would you be ready to to go in January if that's something that you both wanted to decide to do? Honestly, I'm ready to go in December. Mm -hmm. You know, I know they're getting uh, uh, they got another pay per view coming up then in, in Vegas. I might be looking at that, but you know. Your boy getting a little name on them, so they 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 would like to pick and choose, and uh, you know they don't like to put too many uh, uh, headliners on one card. So we'll, we'll have to see. We'll now have to see. Gregor Gillespie here in New York, and you say you want to fight Makachev in Russia. Yeah. Is it important for you to be the away fighter, or is it like you like that extra challenge, or what, why is that? Yeah, I just uh, I don't know. Yeah, I guess I do. I like the I like the challenge. You know, we this is how my career has been. You know, I always feel like I fight with my back against the wall. And uh, that's going to be another one. You know, in, in Russia, it's, it's a big moment. So I feel like I'm, I'm going to rise to that occasion. If we got to fight somewhere else, cool. But if it's my pick, like, let's do it where you want to do it and uh, see what you got. Kevin, uh, I'm sure the feeling of getting a knockout like that is probably you know, something you probably couldn't even describe. Um, how do you go forward and make sure you don't fall in love with that and like trying to recreate that and stick to what your strengths are? Yeah. Uh, each fight is different, you know. Um, I, I've knocked out plenty of people before, you know, just not in the UFC yet. You know, I'm just now barely starting to, to scratch the surface and barely starting to show people what I can really do. And uh, that's just now coming out into the octagon. I've been doing this shit for years and years and years. But, you know, I'm, I'm only 27 years old. I got a lot of fights in the UFC, but people ain't really seen me fight yet. And uh, I, I feel like as the... the as my career keeps going forward and as it keeps going on, I'm going to keep showing new shit. And you're going to be like, damn, I didn't know you could even do that. But uh, just wait on it. Is that it's coming. something the rest of the division should be worried about? I mean, you do have, it feels like you've had a long story already in the UFC, but as you said, you're still in the 27. I'm just getting started. It ain't even been a, I mean, it's been a long story. It's been a lot of years, but I'm, I'm barely even getting started. No major surgeries, no nothing. That's why I say you look at this division, after Khabib and, and Tony fight, who, who you going to have them fight? You, you, Gaethje? I mean, uh, and then, you do, are you really giving him a shot? Come on. Like, I, I'm here to show that I, it's going to be me. I'm the one. You know, and I ain't even got to prove it. Like, I, I go out there and I'm going to just do it. Kevin, yeah, just two for me. Uh, you asked, like, Gregor Gillespie fighting out Islam Makhachev. Mm -hmm. Both supremely talented guys, but perhaps not the elite elite in terms of establishment. They haven't quite fought the top guys. Is any of that sort of a conscious decision to... Give yourself some more time to work with Faraz and get that groove before you dive into the really deep end of lightweight. You know, no, th these guys are, are are supremely talented. Th this is lightweight. Um, the top 20 guys could all be top five. You know, they just, uh, these rankings, I, I don't really pay too close attention to it. I'm looking at who who is who is that guy that, that the real people know is, is next up. You know, you, you ask anybody in, who's seen Islam fight or seen him train or anything, and they say, oh yeah, that guy, that guy has real potential and, he, and he's, he can really fight. So that's a fight that really interests me. And I don't really care too much who, who's the, you know, the biggest or, or who, who's got the biggest name value and all that. I should probably. It'd probably be smarter for me to take tune-up fights and shit like that. But uh, no, nah, I want a guy on his up and up. I want a guy trying to make a name off me. I want When I fight that guy, I want that to be his best day. And then uh, I want to see what he can do. And getting an emphatic finish like this, was it sort of confirmation that this new uh, relationship with Faraz is going to work for you moving forward? I think so. I think so. I knew it before the fight even happened. You know, you can't see the future or nothing. But I knew going up there, 
already had made me a better fighter. And uh, I feel like he's got the right style. He, he, his cerebral approach, approach to it. I'm already like rah, rah, rah. And I'm already like, I've already got the explosiveness. I got, I got the ability and everything. But his technical approach to it, his focus to it, uh, I felt like made me a better fighter regardless of how tonight went. And uh, it's going to be something in the future too. Kevin, when you made weight at 155, one of the moments that stood out to me was as soon as they announced the weight, you smirked. You had this big smirk on your face. What was that all about? Yeah, because people, you know, people kind of wrote it off. People thought I was going to have a, a hard time with it. Um, I stayed focused even through the weight cut. And uh, I, I tried to use my experience through it. You know, it's been a while since I made that weight. And uh, uh, it, there, there was some, a lot of people had questions about it. So then when I did it and did it kind of, you know, easy, I was like, all right, well, you know, just wait on it. Y'all wait on it. This, this is just one step. 55 is definitely the future for me. Um, Might have had some hiccups here and there. Might have been some downtimes here and there, but the real people who've been sticking through me through this and really been watching my story, they can see me build and they can see me doing better and better and me making weight easily like that and, and, and without much issue, I felt like it was just one more step in the right direction and uh, it's something that I'm going to continue moving forward. Thanks, Kevin. Thanks guys.